This slideshow is designed to give you an overview of how the brain works when it works well. The brain is made up mostly of water, which means it definitely needs water in order to perform well. And although it's only 2% of the body's weight, it consumes 20% of the body's energy. In other words, it needs food in order to function. The brain gets its energy from blood. It uses about 8 gallons of blood per hour, and from that blood it gets oxygen and glucose. Um, the more we exercise, the more oxygen it gets, and the better foods we eat, the more glucose it gets. So we have a, an organ of our body that is a very big consumer of oxygen. It needs fuel and it needs water in order to function properly. The brain, when it's fully developed, is three pounds, um, and it's made up of 100 billion nerve cells, otherwise known as neurons. Humans are the only mammal that uh, happens to be born with a brain that is not fully developed. The first pound of brain growth occurs during um, the time the baby is in utero. The second pound is added during the first year of life, and the third pound isn't fully in place until early adolescence. What's being added is not more nerve cells, but the nerve cells thicken, they require more nutrients, and that creates more weight or density, and so we don't have a fully developed brain until adolescence. The picture you see in front of you is a picture of a nerve cell, otherwise known as a neuron. The neuron consists of dendrites, which are finger-like branches that take in information from other nerve cells. There's a cell body in the middle of that, and then an axon that sends out information to other nerve cells. In the insert on this picture, you see what's called the synapse. That's the gap between nerve cells. What happens in that gap is that electrical signals from one nerve cell are transmitted into chemical signals and then sent off to another nerve cell who receives it and turns it into an electrical signal. Sometimes the synapse becomes a very important part of the learning process in that the neurotransmitters may or may not work as well as they should and may hinder nerve cells from communicating well with one another. Um, and oftentimes we give people medications to help with this. For example, a person with ADD takes a medication that helps the neurotransmitters um, allow the nerve cells to communicate better. A person who's depressed may take a medication that will uh, make sure that the neurotransmitters are firing correctly to help them with those symptoms. Nerve cells will continue to grow and develop and connect with one another throughout life. And um, the more experiences a person has, the more connections are formed. And that will continue to happen unless someone develops Alzheimer's disease. And at this point, what we know about Alzheimer's is that there's a chemical that destroys the connections between nerve cells, which means that memory um, isn't happening. And we still don't have a cure for that, but if a person does not have Alzheimer's, they should, develop, should continue to develop nerve cells and connections between nerve cells throughout life. Throughout life, we have periods where we have greater growth of nerve cells than others and points where the nerve cells prune themselves um, if they don't find a function to serve. That first wave of proliferation and pruning occurs before birth, and the focus at that point is on the number of brain cells. Um, and basically, nerve cells that don't find a job to perform are pruned away even before birth. Some believe that there is a connection to autism with this particular spurt of brain growth um, or nerve cell growth and nerve cell pruning. The second wave of proliferation and, pr and pruning occurs between the ages of 6 to 25, and the focus here is on the number of connections between nerve cells. So the period of proliferation is from the ages 6 to 12, and at that point, what's happening is the gray matter, which are the neurons and the dendrites, 
thicken. Um, and they think that there is possibly something going askew with a person who has ADHD or Tourette's uh, during this uh, proliferation period. The pruning period happens from age 12 to 25, at which point the gray matter thins and white matter thickens. That means that that's helping the nerve cells communicate better, making them more efficient. Um, and usually pruning at this point is guided by use, use it or lose it principle, which means that if you don't use those nerve cells and they don't keep firing and wiring together, that eventually they'll be pruned away. And this particular wave of pruning is associated possibly with the onset of schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. This photo shows um, the development of the, the brain and how gray matter gradually gives way to um, white matter over time. Because our brain isn't fully developed when we're born, um, we need to be very well aware that even through the teen years, we're de dealing with um, a brain that's not mature. Uh, the last part of the brain to develop fully is the prefrontal cortex, the thinking brain, and that develops during adolescence. It's the part of the brain that's in charge of um, judgment and decision making, and that is a skill that gets developed at that particular time in life. Information enters um, our brain through our senses and goes directly to the thalamus, which is the sensory relay station. From there, the brain per takes in that information and decides if that information is perceived as being threatening or not. If it's perceived as being threatening, it's processed quickly. If it's perceived as being non-threatening, it's processed in a much more slower fashion. Quick processing involves information going from the thalamus to the amygdala, which is the center of emotion to the cerebellum, which is a center of movement. That's great for a flight or fright, flight response where we're trying to save ourselves and survive, but not so good for school. We want the slow processing where information comes into our thalamus, it goes to our hippocampus, which is the center of memory, and then off to the cortex where we can think about that information.